Welcome to study session 6 Costing Techniques Introduction Costing techniques are basically procedures which can be used with any of the costing methods to determine the income realized for a specific period as well as valuation of closing stock. The most prominent costing techniques are marginal and absorption costing. Objectives This lecture should fortify you with the ability to prepare cost accounting statements using both marginal and absorption costing techniques. Marginal costing This technique differentiates between fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are those which do not change with the level of activity while variable cost changes proportionately with the level of production. The marginal cost takes into account only the variable cost to find out marginal costs. The difference between sales and marginal cost is known as contribution. The fixed costs are deducted from the contribution to find out the profits. It is regarded as some cost that will not be affected by present decision and level of activity in the relevant range. The marginal cost of a product is its variable cost which includes direct labor, direct material, direct expenses, and the variable part of overhead. The term marginal cost sometimes refers to the marginal cost per unit and sometimes to the total marginal cost of a department or batch or operation. The meaning is usually clear from the content. Alternative names for marginal costing are contribution approach, variable costing, and direct costing. In line with the principles of marginal costing, for any given period of time, fixed cost will be the same for any volume of sales and production provided that the level of activity is within the relevant range. Thus, by selling an extra item of product or service, revenue will increase by the sales value of the item sold. Costs will increase by the variable cost per unit and profit will increase by the amount of contribution earned from the extra item. Profit measured should therefore be based on an analysis of total contribution. Since fixed costs relate to a period of time and do not change with increases or decreases in sales volume, it is misleading to charge units of sale with a share of fixed costs. When a unit of product is made, the extra costs incurred in its manufacture are the variable production costs. Fixed costs are unaffected and no extra fixed costs are incurred when output is increased. Advantages of Marginal Costing Technique Marginal costing is simple to understand. By not charging fixed overhead to cost of production, the effect of varying charges per unit is avoided. It prevents the illogical carry forward in stock valuation in some proportion of current year's fixed overhead. The effects of alternative sales or production policies can be more readily available and assessed, and decisions taken will yield the maximum return to business. It eliminates large balances left in overhead control accounts, which indicate the difficulty of ascertaining an accurate overhead recovery rate. Practical cost control is greatly facilitated by avoiding arbitrary allocation of fixed overhead. Efforts can be concentrated on maintaining a uniform and consistent marginal cost. It helps in short-term profit planning by break-even and profitability analysis, both in terms of quantity and graphs. Comparative profitability and performance between two or more products and divisions can easily be assessed and brought to the notice of management for decision making. Disadvantages of Marginal Costing Technique The separation of costs into fixed and variable elements is difficult and sometimes gives misleading results. Under Marginal Costing, stocks and work in progress are understated. The exclusion of fixed costs from inventories affects profit and true and fair view of financial affairs of an organization 
may not be clearly transparent. Volume variance in standard costing also discloses the effect of fluctuating output on fixed overhead. Marginal cost data becomes unrealistic in cases of highly fluctuating levels of production. Control affected by means of budgetary control is also accepted by many. In order to know the net profit, we should not be satisfied with contribution and hence fixed overhead is also a valuable item. A system which ignores fixed costs is less effective since a major portion of fixed costs is not taken care of under marginal costing. In practice, sales price, fixed cost and variable cost per unit may vary. Thus, the assumption underlying the theory of marginal costing sometimes becomes unrealistic. For long-term profit planning, absorption costing is better. Absorption costing. This is the technique that charges all costs, both variable and fixed, to operations, processes, or products. Advantages of absorption costing. It does not undermine the importance of fixed costs. It avoids fictitious losses being reported by representing product costs at full factory cost to bring product to a point that is ready for use. It assists in arriving at total cost of production, which is a basis for selling price decision process. It matches costs with revenue since fixed production costs are part of the product costs. Limitations of absorption costing. It does not help in decision making. Application of fixed overheads depends on estimates and not on the actuals and as such there may be under or over absorption of the same. Calculation of under or over absorbed overhead may be problematic. Marginal costing and absorption costing compared. A. In absorption costing, items of stock a cost to include a fair share of fixed production overhead, whereas in marginal costing, stocks are valued at variable production cost only. The value of closing stock will be higher in absorption costing than in marginal costing. B. As a consequence of carrying forward an element of fixed production overheads in closing stock values, the cost of sales used to determine profit in absorption costing will 1. include some fixed production overhead costs incurred in a previous period but carried forward into opening stock values of a current period. 2. exclude some fixed production overhead costs incurred in the current period by including them in closing stock values. In contrast, marginal costing charges the actual fixed cost of a period in full into the profit and loss account of the period. Marginal costing is therefore sometimes known as period costing. C. In absorption costing, actual, actual fully absorbed unit costs are reduced by producing in greater quantities, whereas in marginal costing, unit variable costs are unaffected by the volume of production, that is, provided that, that variable cost per unit remain unaltered at the change level of production activity. Profit per unit in any period can be affected by the actual volume of production in absorption. This is not the case in marginal costing. D. In marginal costing, the identification of variable costs and of contribution enables management to use cost information more easily for decision making purposes such as budget decision making. It is easy to decide by how much contribution and therefore profit will be affected by changes in sales volume. Profit will be unaffected by changes in production volume. In absorption costing, however, the effect on profit in a period, changes in both production volume 
and sales volume is not easily seen because behavior is not analyzed and incremental costs are not used in the calculation of actual profit. Reasons for differences in profit from marginal and absorption costing. Over and under absorbed overheads. In absorption costing, fixed overheads can never be absorbed exactly because of difficulty in forecasting cost and volume of output. If these balances of under or over absorbed are not written off to costing profit and loss accounts, the actual amount incurred is not shown in it. In marginal costing, however, the actual fixed overhead incurred is wholly charged against contribution and hence there will be some difference in net profits. Differences in stock valuation. In marginal costing, work in progress and finished stocks are valued at marginal cost. But in absorption costing, they are valued at total production cost. Hence, profit will differ as different amounts of fixed overheads are considered in two accounts. The profit difference due to difference in stock valuation is summarized below. When there is no opening and closing stocks, there will be no difference in profit. When opening and closing stocks are the same, there will be no difference in profit provided the fixed cost element in opening and closing stocks are of the same amount. When closing stock is more than opening stock, the profit under absorption costing will be higher as comparatively a greater portion of fixed cost is included in closing stock and carried over to next period. When closing stock is less than opening stock, the profit under absorption costing will be less as comparatively a higher amount of fixed cost contained in opening stock is deputed during the current period. Example, Canby's Art produces a single product with the following production figures in kilograms over periods 1 to 3. Selling price by kilogram is 9 naira. Administrative overheads are fixed at 25,000 naira. And also one third of the production overheads are fixed. Prepare separate operating statements based on marginal costing and absorption costing techniques. You have the solution. Operating statement using marginal costing. And operation statement using absorption costing. Summary. The marginal costing techniques lay emphasis on variable cost and contribution. Fixed costs are treated as period costs and removed from contributions to get profit. The marginal cost of a product is its variable cost which includes direct labor, direct material, direct expenses and the variable parts of overheads. Absorption costing is a technique that charges all costs both variable and fixed together to get the profit without calculating contribution. Main reasons for differences in profit from marginal and absorption costing are differences in stock variation and over and under absorbed overheads. We have come to the end of study session 6. Thanks for listening.